we'll do a couple minutes of uh, Q and A on first uh, uh, this group, and then we'll, if we have time, we'll do a little bit with um, the, the tech apps, which was phenomenal. I'm so glad I got that recorded. You know, <laughs> people, you know, it's, it's tough to give speeches, but in a group sometimes it's less severe. So with voting rights uh, from the audience, what's a question, Jermaine, James? Lucille, Jasmine, what kind of question do you have for them? Uh, did you guys, uh, you guys think, uh, I mean, did you do any research about, like, like, uh, we're having trouble vote, uh, voting? Like on my personal res, uh, we can't vote because a lot of people don't have IDs, like proper IDs. Is that something you ran into in your research? Is, like, your, uh, is your res in North Dakota? No, uh, mine's in Wyoming. Oh. So they won't, they won't let you vote properly because uh, they don't, they don't accept tribal IDs, which is a government ID, <laughs> government issued ID, but. Uh, I don't know if you guys did any research about Are you guys like running into the residential address problem? Yeah. Yeah, so um, I don't know Wyoming specifically, but I did do a little bit of research about North Dakota, especially when the whole 2018 thing happened. Um, that just like came out of nowhere, like them require, all of a sudden requiring residential addresses. Um, I know that it kind of had to do with how Heidi Heitkamp was rerunning for uh, Senate, I believe, and she's a Democrat. Mm -hmm. And um, in 2018, when she was elected to the Senate, um, Native American voters in North Dakota specifically were like one of the leading majorities, minorities in getting her her position. So. It might be a political thing, to be honest. It probably is. Um, but it's also just another way for the U.S. government to just take away our rights as human beings. As U.S. citizens, we have the right to vote, but they will do everything in their power to make sure we don't vote. Because they know we're going to be voting on the side they probably don't want us to vote. If this is not going away, and I do think technology has helped. Because Heidi got voted out, Kramer took her place, and he can't give a speech. But, because he, he spoke at the summit my first year here, and I went, Great, get somebody to write a speech for you. He just flew here and there, and I went, so unorganized, where Hovind and a couple others had a script, blah, blah, blah. Even Armstrong had a script. Um, he just flew by the seat of his pants, and I went, What is that? It's a lack of organization on his staff's part, but um, it's not going away. It's a topic that is not going away. And people individually have to do something about it. Number one, vote. Get somebody with you to you know, partner up, vote, bring two people in. Um, so that's why this particular topic, it's, it's, it's a hot topic, but it's not going away. It's also, it's not even Native Americans that are being affected by voting. Um, I know um, during the 2020 election between Trump and Biden, um, there were a lack of po po uh, polling places in predominantly black communities uh, in bigger cities. Um, so again, it just, it all comes down to politics, and it all comes down to our race, because the majority, I don't, this is, I don't know the statistics, but like, the majority of Native people, if they were to vote, would probably vote Democrat. And the Republicans don't want that. <laughs> And polling places uh, have been uh, taken away. It's in the paper every day in every state. They've just dissolved them. 
like it's going to stop people from voting um, in particular suburbs. So um, that's not going away, and it's it, it's 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 never going away because you have to be able to vote in this, or it's not a democracy anymore. Good. Any other questions over on this side? Did everybody register to vote? Make sure you vote. Drive <coughs> license. Blah blah blah. Travel IDs in certain states. You don't states. need to register to vote. Oh, oh, well, I am you can just show up. Yeah. yeah. I have always registered to vote. Well, mm -hmm. I vote. I'm going to vote. I'm motivated. All right. Good job. Yeah. You may relax. And the tech apps, do we have any questions from the class on? Does everybody have a, a language app on their phone? Yeah. If you don't, if you leave my class today without one, I'm going to beat you. No, I'm not. But, you know, if they are free, and if they are charming for children, why wouldn't they be charming for adults? You know, we game on our phones. Why if it's built for all, and children are liking it, and positive reaction to it, because language is very complex. I learned the language, my daughter took five years of Spanish, did a test for 15 minutes at USD and UND and got 16 credits each for Spanish. But they had really good, remarkable teachers in high school, 9 through 12, and then they took advanced placement. They took 15 minute tests at UND and USD and got 16 credits, so we got a minor in Spanish in a blink. And it cost me 90 bucks for each one. Mom, I need 90 bucks. What for? Oh, I just got 16 credits. Oh, that's a deal. So, uh, one went on to get a major in Spanish, and one got a minor, just because they had so many credits already. And with a biology major, fish and wildlife, and then you get a Spanish major, two different degrees, it's kind of interesting, because it shows the two worlds, language, the complexity, and it ain't easy to get one of those. Just like Lorraine and Vern at um, uh, Spirit Lake, you know preservation of it. And I'm glad she's got CD and she's recorded. And for you with grandmothers who speak native language, get your kids recorded with a grandmother. I'm recording with my grandchildren. I made a YouTube channel and I read books. Strawberry. That was my first one. And it, they're insane because they're interacting with me as I'm trying to read. But it's, it's preserved and it's free to do. And get the grandmas and your children together and, and preserve just little stories, even just words. Just get that recorded. Easy to do with phones. So the apps, I'm glad they're free. Because it should be. Yep. Just to add to your, to your uh, comment there, um, I grew up in a different generation and mostly everybody in this room, I guess. Uh, uh, I would, uh, like every summer, as long as I remember, I was, uh, I was raised in Pine Ridge. And... Uh, my grandma was the one who kind of raised me in the summer, so I grew up speaking like woman, <laughs> Lakota, and uh, I didn't understand the difference back then, you know, but I was pretty fluent when I was growing up, and uh, my uncles would tease me, and my grandpa, you know, they would, <laughs> but uh, when I went back to school, I would get teased for speaking my language, and um, it was, that was kind of bad because I, I didn't want to speak it anymore. I had long hair, all that stuff. And then, um, but uh, as, as I got older, and I, I, my, my app is uh, the new Lakota Dictionary, so that's what an app I got. And I go back to it when, um, when I get confused with some, some words because, again, I used to speak fluent, but it was woman, you know, so I get confused sometimes. I'm speaking uh, like my grandma. <laughs> and, uh, and Dakota comes in my office fluent and he, he's saying and he, he's upset about something he comes in and he's, he's not speaking English and I just I back away and I just kind of go bring it and tell me because of the beauty and the complexity of it and I kind of get his point I don't know what he's talking about but it's like time out <laughs> but an easy way to learn guys is because um, I, I, I talk all the time to my one of my friends in uh, Santee and he's at Dakota and I'm Lakota, but we can still understand each other. Easy way to learn is, uh, is what he told me is um, to speak a word a hundred times. Just one word, and you'll own that word. 
like every day we we say just little tiny words that we all already know because we own them so like like her she she knows her indian name because and she can say it really well because she's she says it all the time and it's it's that easy so like if you want a hundred seems like a lot yeah it seems like a lot but we we say the same things every day in english that's why we right. that's why it's real easy for us and if you guys did that in your language it would be super easy but the littler you are, the stronger the language will be saved because mm -hmm. kids can, like their brains are just sponges for language. And and if you guys didn't know this, um, there's a, you can look it up too, there's a, there's a thing uh, that the government wrote, it's, I don't know if it's a law or something, but the reason why we have sovereign rights is because we can speak our language, but after all our language is gone, we don't have sovereignty anymore, and they could they could take away the government can take away our our reservations. They could remove those borders. It just takes one person to say, "Let's go test that that reservation over there and see if they can speak their language." Because if they can't, that means. But they, Kanisha said there are six elders now that certainly like better fluent. Yeah. yeah. And James, you asked if there was going to be a Ukraine bomb today or what was going to happen, but. Do you guys today think, and that's not about Ukraine, <laughs> will your language be lost? No. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think, I think you're in front of a tsunami with technology. Because in the 80s, they were recording and putting things in. And as long as you have fluent speaker and recordings and translations, I, I just don't think they're going to be lost. Because no, there's I a lot of us that are younger. I think a lot of us that are young really don't care about it, but as you get older, the more you want to learn about it and teach your younger generation how to speak it, and the kids are the best way to go, because the kid can pick that up quick and they keep it. Um, back home at our library, there's a dictionary where all of the books are And another thing too, the dictionaries are super, they're super awesome to have. And um, what I was told too, uh, just because you know I talk a lot to a lot of native language teachers, the um, they shouldn't worry about spelling neither, because we all had to make up our own spelling, you know. And um, in my drum group, we have a song page, and when I send them songs in Lakota. And I used to, at first, I used to send them like how they were spelled in the dictionary, nice. but none of them could read it. So I spell it out phonetically, and it was the same thing, you know. So if you guys have trouble, you know, reading something, just spell it out phonetically, and and it's the same difference, you know. There's there's no right or wrong way. So. And there are symbols like uh, said uh, with the, the accents. The tone sounds, and but that is with any language. In, in German, we had umlauts, two dots above certain words, and, and there's kind of a guttural sound that comes with those words in the back of the throat. Uh, as I learned German, so the symbols are important too, and out there, in, yeah. So yeah, I, I just you know it's a major question: Will language be lost? And that's for all 550 plus tribes. But I think that. Her apps are going to really, really stop that tsunami from just wiping out. You know, because if you lose your elders and you lose.
lose those voices. Number one, that's what you, that's what we got to preserve, and um, it's it's a no-brainer. You know, find somebody who's fluent and get them recorded and translated, and yeah, so super stuff. Come on, picking groups for years. All right, we have ten minutes left. Um, I did have my Tuesday Thursday class the last couple minutes. Um, begin there there. You guys haven't, have you? The Reader's Theater. Oh. And they're short lines, and I'll give you each a number, and we'll just read for the last 10 minutes. Thank you. Can I shut this baby off?